Ensure that the front bleed port orifice is not plugged as this will greatly decrease performance. When reinstalling the pilot sleeve assembly, lightly grease the pilot spool sleeve o-rings with lithium-based bearing grease. Ensure that both external snap rings are fully seated in the snap ring grooves. Invert both diaphragms by either placing them in a bench vise or placing them in the center section and standing on the outer piston. Install the air valve isolator gasket onto the center block, noting the orientation of the alignment pin and groove. Next, install the air valve onto the isolator gasket, also noting the alignment pin and groove location. Place the muffler plate gasket and muffler plate onto the air valve and secure them using the four Allen head fasteners. Snug all fasteners by hand, then torque them using a crossing pattern to the recommended specifications as stated in the Engineering Operation and Maintenance Manual. Once the air distribution system has been reassembled, you are now ready to replace the elastomers. You may choose to use a Wilden elastomer repair kit at this time, which includes all pump elastomers in one convenient package. The complete kit components are located on a label on the back of each kit. Next, build a shaft, piston, and diaphragm assembly. The shouldered washer must be installed with the shouldered side towards the center block and the flat side towards the outer piston. Lightly coat the glide rings with lithium-based bearing grease. Using a twisting motion, gently install the main shaft into the bore. Do not force the shaft into the bore as the center block glide rings may be damaged. Install the second shouldered washer as noted earlier. Then install the opposite side diaphragm and tighten the outer piston to the specified torque. Uninvert the diaphragm so that the bead is properly installed into the bead groove. Install the liquid chamber onto the diaphragm. Using a crossing pattern, tighten all fasteners to the specified torque in the EOM. With one side tightened, you will need to invert the opposite diaphragm by using large pry bars or air pressure. To make the tool in this video, you may utilize a valve ball by drilling a through hole in it and pressing a pipe nipple into the opening, then attach it to an air nozzle. Once the second side is inverted, you may install the second liquid chamber, tightening the fasteners using the recommended torque in a crossing pattern. Next, install the valve seats into the inlet manifold with the integrated o-ring facing the bottom of the bore of the inlet manifold. Then, install the valve balls onto the valve seats. Place the complete center section and liquid chamber assembly onto the inlet manifold. Install the fasteners from the bottom side up using a washer on both sides. Tighten to the recommended torque as specified in the EOM in a crossing pattern. Install the valve seats with the integrated o-ring side down into the liquid chambers. Then place the valve balls onto the seats.
Place the discharge manifold onto the liquid chambers. The stack-up may be slightly off and the difference should be split on the discharge manifold. Install the fasteners from the top side down using a washer on both sides. Then, tighten to the recommended torque as specified in the EOM in a crossing pattern.